Here we have another uh, piece of uh, very old test equipment in my collection. Um, this is a transferide capacitor analyzer that was uh, made by Sprague, the uh, capacitor company. And I believe this dates to the uh, early 1960s. I've had this since uh, the 80s and I know I powered it up at that time and it seemed to be working although I've never really used it and quite honestly I don't think I don't think it's been plugged in or turned on since sometime maybe in the early 90s so we're gonna take a take a look at this and see if it still works um, and, and do a little check out on it I do notice that and I think I remember this from before that there's a missing knob here um, what this does is you can measure uh, capacitors on it with a bridge in as a bridge in it and then there's one of these eye tubes that's used as a null indicator for uh, for your bridge measurement it also has power factor and leakage current and insulation resistance uh, I'm using this meter here uh, this one only goes up to 150 volts I know there were other other similar models that Sprague offered that had higher higher test voltages than this one um, this one I, I'm given to understand from some reading was more intended for quote-unquote transistor capacitors which would have been low voltage things in the later 50s and into the 60s um, whereas the vacuum tube stuff tended to use higher voltage capacitors back then all right um, one of, we do have fortunately this is stuck the little pull-out tray here which has your uh, quick how to use instructions um, I don't have a printed manual, although I, uh, some years ago I was able to find a downloaded one of a rather poor, poor PDF, but it's better than nothing. Um, if we take a look at it, this thing's pretty big. Uh, like some of my other stuff, this originally came from a tech school that I went to back in the, in the 80s, which is why it has uh, an old property tag on it, and... Just has a power cord here. I see there's a screw missing. And I think I saw another screw. Yes, there's another screw missing here. So somebody's probably had this opened up in the past um, to look at it. All right. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just pull the chassis out and take a look at what's inside. And then I'm um, Gonna make some plans on you know maybe trying to power it up safely after we see what's in there. I believe this all has vacuum tubes in it. Okay, I, I've got the capacitor analyzer out of its case. Um, it was a little more involved than I would have thought. Turned out that I thought maybe that one screw that was remaining in the back was all that held it in, but it turned out all. All these ones around the uh, faceplate also, so I had to take all of them screws out. And this is a pretty heavy chassis to slide out of here, out of the housing. Alright, so let's take a look at what's inside this thing. And you can tell why it's so heavy. We have uh, uh, these two transformers here. Um, we got our steel uh, chassis. Um, we've got, looks like, three, six, eight vacuum tubes, a couple of the uh, metal can capacitors, we have a lot of other capacitors, um, and resistors on the back. Look down inside, um, we have our, uh, our eye tube here, and there's some very large uh, black uh, caps in there. Um, yeah, and then uh, I'm assuming, actually that should be a pot. I think that's a large pot on uh, on the logarithmic uh, dial there. Uh, so we got a bunch of pots in here. I see another small, small transformer down in the bottom, down in there. And that switch over there looks like it has resistors on it. Everything seems to be intact. As I expected to, like I was saying earlier, I, I I believe I had this powered up at one point in the 80s, maybe in the early 90s. And I thought it was sort of working at that time. 
or at least nominally working. So look, look at the bottom. Um, got our tube sockets. There's a few more caps here. There is a fuse. So here's our power cord comes in. Looks like the fuse is in series with the uh, incoming power. All right, which is a good thing. Um, power switch in the back here. Um, there is a shield can on, I'm assuming a pot on here, so it must be sensitive. This is uh, looks like an AC motor start capacitor. So those are uh, typically oil filled. And then is that a date code on the bottom? 6434. So if that's the date code, it would be the 34th week of 1964. So that kind of aligns with uh, approximately how old I thought this thing was, just from some research. These were made in the early 60s. Um, this all cloth, uh, cloth covered wire. Um, ooh, that, uh, that seems to be like oozing something out. It's got a something oozing out of it, oil or something. It's probably, you know, whatever that is, it's some kind of wire. Um, is that like, uh, maybe it's coax that goes into the shielded can and yeah, maybe the, the jacket on the coax is breaking down perhaps. Well, hopefully it isn't breaking down so much that it shorted out internally. All right. Um, down here without dropping it on the bench. It gets very heavy. All right, we got our uh, cardboard here. I wonder if that comes off. It does. So we have our sprig, uh, big filter cap there. And oh, see that also has a date code on it. Uh, if you can read that, 6443. So yes, and I know one from 64. Alright, put that back in there. And then these two caps are, they look very long and thin, don't they? Um, I think they're capacitors, maybe they're not. Uh, no, they aren't. It says Megohm on there. Um, I'll, there. I'll have to look at the manual later. There's a parts list in there with a schematic. Um, fortunately, so if I do need to try to repair anything, getting this going, um, I'll have some clue about what, what I can use for parts. Um, so I think in order to power this up, I am going to try the old dim bulb tester. Um, just because of these caps, uh, I don't know what the state of them is. They're, they're almost 60 years old. Haven't had power applied to them in over in like 30 years or more. Um, might be a good idea to try dim bulb. I have to rig something up for that. I don't normally power up a lot of old equipment, so I don't have a ready setup like uh, some of the other uh, other videos you might find on YouTube. All right. All right, we're, uh, we're gonna try powering this up on a dim bulb tester, and it was something I had to improvise in a hurry. Well, so I don't have anything built up. Um, so down here, we have a cord plugged into this power strip, which I know would have a, a breaker in it. And this is what I euphemistically call a, a death cord or a suicide cord, because the other end of it has just two clip leads on it. So what I've done is I have my, my cord, and then I have a, a 60 watt bulb here, and then some, some jumper leads going back to the the power cord on our capacitor tester and I'm using this plastic stick because even though these are insulated I don't want to accidentally uh, touch any of this because it is plugged in right now so this is live and so now I'm going to turn on the power switch on our capacitor tester and I'm going to use the stick to do it and what happens does anything happen we have no bulb whatsoever and is there no power here? I thought this uh, thought this power strip is turned on because I thought my soldering iron is plugged into it here, and it is. And the soldering iron comes on, 
So, we don't have any bulb at all. I wonder what's up with that. Alright. Alright, I'm going to investigate this a little bit, and we'll be right back. All right, I did a little more investigation. I, I think the there's a bad there was a bad connection at the bulb. So let's let's try this again after I I think I got it fixed. All right, there our bulb has lit um, fairly dimly. I do hear kind of a hum um, coming out of this guy. Um, so is the dim bulb getting any dimmer? Um, let's see, there's some glow on that tube there. Uh, that's a 6X4, which I believe is a dual rectifier. So that's like the power supply rectifier uh, for this whole instrument. Um, let's see here. The question would let's see the pilot light has lit. We got a little bit of green glow on our eye tube. Um, yeah, this says eye sensitivity down there. What's that do? It kind of moves around a little bit, doesn't it? see that the bulb has gotten any brighter or dimmer um, since I've been sitting here with this powered. So the question then is uh, how long do I leave it on like this hoping to uh, do some reforming of those two electrolytics there um, before taking the bulb out. Alright so there's a little bit of glow on that uh, 1287 there, and then I see some on the 6G, uh, what is that, 6CG7. Um, I don't smell any smoke yet. All right. So, no tingle time. Let's rotate this a little bit. So one of the things this does is leakage test and I believe it puts out uh, well voltage on, on the test jacks over here and then you can set your voltage with this. So maybe what I'll do is see if it does put out some voltage. So. So looking at the switch up here, you got polarizing voltage. And I think you set the voltage when it's in that position. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll set the camera down or I'll turn it off and come back. I think I'm gonna hook up my meter um, to these output jacks and see if this thing puts out some polarizing voltage. And I'll be back in a moment after I set that up. All right, I'm back a few minutes later. Um, the bulb glowing looks about the same as it's always been. All right, so I got my, uh, my DMM here um, connected over to here. This is set in DC volt mode. And so let's uh, turn this knob to the polarizing. Okay, that's the zero adjust position. A calibrate polarizing voltage 82 volts DC and this knob over here is in the 60 to 150 setting and I think you tune the and I see this meter what's that meter displaying on the volts scale which one is the volts scale the top scale 
Um, I'm not sure what uh, which one's the voltage there. So 60 to 150. I don't, I don't know. At any rate, I'm going to... No shock. We're going to turn this up and down. So we're turning the knob up. And it goes up. It goes up quite a bit, actually, to 180. All right. Turning it down to the bottom, we have 54. So over here... You can see this meter is working. Um, yeah, I am not sure which scale you're reading the voltage on. 60 to 150. Maybe it doesn't go full scale. I'm not sure. All right. Um, so it looks like there is a DC supply in there that is doing something. Let's uh, let's have it show AC here. Ooh, that's interesting. Why was it? Wow, what's up with that? This is supposed to be the uh, just AC, and it's going up and down quite a lot actually. So I'm not sure what's that about. Um, although this thing is under is running on reduced voltage because of this bulb here. So there's every possibility that something isn't working right internally with this guy because it's not running on full voltage. Alright. Um, maybe I'll just leave it on for a while and uh, let that cap reform possibly. And then take the bulb out and see what happens. Um, that seems like, like a plan. I don't smell anything yet other than this uh, light bulb is kind of warm. There's some dust on it. I haven't used that for a while. Alright, I am going to let this sit for a while and uh, we'll come back later. Okay, I left that on for, I don't know, a good 10 minutes or so, and so I've taken the dim bulb out, and I've replaced that with uh, this kilowatt, so we can monitor the power. Otherwise, it's uh, straight straight power from the power strip um, through the kilowatt uh, into the cord of the unit here, and we'll uh, set this for watts, and let's try turning it on again, see what happens. So, 58 watts, about 58 watts, it's not going up, it's not going down either, really. Alright, I had left it in the same position I had it before. The humming it puts out is a little bit louder. Rectifier tube is glowing more brightly, which would make sense. We got more voltage on the filament. Um, so there's a bit of a purple glow on these zero uh, A2, B2, and B2 things. I think those are, um, I have to look them up, but I believe those are. Uh, basically the equivalent of a Zener diode in the tube world. So voltage reference regulators. I didn't see it glowing before, so maybe there wasn't enough voltage to get them to light off. All right, let's slide this back again to get, so the power changed, still the same. All right. Um, we look over here, the meter goes up higher now, it goes over scale, but it only goes down that far. Hmm. So looking at this some more, I think what it is is the upper scale goes up to 15, which would be like 150 or uh, 15 or 15 there and then the lower scale goes to six so you got like zero to six six in there 
Now, so that might make some sense. It's like if you put it at 0 to 6, it goes up to 6 maybe. Okay, and you can't turn it all the way down, I guess. I'll have to read the manual um, on that. Um, okay, let's... Uh, Took this meter off, so let's put that back on and then uh, see if it does that uh, AC pulsing stuff it was doing earlier with the lower voltage. Alright, I got my DMM hooked back up here. Um, this is in the 0 to 6 scale range. And I have this uh, fine knob turned all the way down. Let's see what happens as we turn it up. We can crank this up to about 10 volts. And over here, it's off the meter scale. So, so if this was, uh, well, let's look over here. So if this was more like 6 volts on this meter. What do we have over here? We got 4 volts. So let's do another 15 volt scale. And so that would be the upper scale. Oops, that is not adjustable it seems like. At least on the meter it's not. On this meter we got 5.4 up to about 30. Wow. And then if we go to this one, 15 to 60. That's like not doing anything. Hmm. This meter was working. Is it there? Maybe it was turned up so high it got stuck. That might be it. Okay, so let's back up to the 15. So if this is, um, if we got this one at 15, that's 8.6. Of course, I'm not sure if that meter is supposed to be exactly. I would have to, I'd have to find this calibration procedure for this. I'm not they do not agree that's for sure. Even a light even a little bit. So here we have 97. So if we go to like say well we can't turn this down. This must be just a fine but I'm not sure if there's anything wrong with it or it's working like it's supposed to. Um, on the other hand this thing set meter here maybe ooh so we go to set meter. Now oh, what happens then? Just kind of playing around with this. Holy, I'm looking over there and I see when I turn this all the way up, it went up to 200 volts. So, yee. I'm like, hmm. Um, I think I need to figure out whether this is uh, normal for this thing or, or not normal for this thing. And of course I don't have it in the calibrate position and the calibrate position. I, I looked at that pull-out tray and there's a lot of uh, procedure to, to using this thing to check your capacitor. Anyway, the good news is I still don't smell anything. And what do we got here? We still got about 59 watts. Um, let's go back to um, zero at just, and then our capacitor ranges, we have our green eye tube comes on. All right. So these would be different capacitance ranges on this, and let's see what, uh, definitely don't be reading the capacitance of uh, my DMM here. Um, let's just put a cap on here and uh, see if it sort of works that way. I mean, I don't expect it to be accurate or calibrated, uh, but I just want to see if it seems like it might be working. All right, I'm going to take the meter off and we'll get some other leads here and hook up the capacitor. All right, I got a... Uh, small assortment of uh, various values of caps here and 
I think we'll see if this works. I, I use this meter on a capacitance mode to um, check these caps. They all are reasonably close to the marked value. So, um, yeah, I don't expect this thing to be in any kind of calibration, but I'd like to see if it at least works. Um, it should have a null in it at some indicated dial value uh, appropriate. So we're going to start off with this little one. This is a, um, what was this one again? It's out of that bag there. So it's a 0 0.01 microfarad cap. And we'll hook him up. Come on here. Come on. One-handed, of course. All right, there we go. Set that over there. Um, so 0 0.01 should be... Um, on this scale, uh, C3 right here. And so the C3 is the third scale down from the top. So it would be um, these numbers on this scale. So on a 0 .01, you'd expect to get a null um, somewhere um, in this area. And... Yeah, I don't really see anything on this uh, meter. Actually, it maybe has a shadow there, which would be on the 0.2 area. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this range isn't working. Let's uh, take this one off. And this one is a, a point 0.1. Put that one out of the wall. Don't touch anything. So a point 0.1, uh, can we still use that same scale? Uh, yeah, I think we can. Okay, so a point 0.1, if it was right on, would be right about there on this dial. And I'm not seeing anything here. Um, hmm. All right. Um, let's try a larger one. This one's a 0.47. I'm not sure that's worth dealing with. This one's a 1.0 film capacitor. All right. So for a 1.0, it needs to be in the 0.1 to 50 scale, which would be here on C4. So 1 is about there on this dial. Um, not seeing anything on this eye tube that... Uh, Looks like anything is happening. Alright. Let's move on to this one. This is 82 microfarad. And for 82 microfarad, it looks like we need to be on this scale, C5, which would go from 45 microfarad to 2000 microfarad. And that would be the top scale. Um, so 82 microfarad should be around here somewhere. We have anything happening on this at all? Hmm. Yeah. This doesn't look so good either. Um, Maybe there's some serious problems. My recollection of this thing, when I first got it in the 80s, is it did work, and I thought the smallest cap scale was a little screwed up, but the other scales worked reasonably well, I thought. But this is 30-some uh, years ago, and um, things could have happened. Uh, maybe, maybe a lot of the... Maybe there's problems with parts in the in the bridge circuit that have failed there'd be usually there's capacitors in the bridge circuit on something like this and there's an oscillator 
um, and then with a null detector which is this uh, eye tube so maybe things have failed in the last years from just sitting around in age so this last cap is a, a 470 microfarad one set that there so that would be on the top scale so you would expect to find that one um, somewhere in this vicinity now that one hmm yeah not sure how easy it is to see this eye tube it's not the brightest um, especially with all the shop lights I have in here I mean, it almost looks like it's doing something around there, but uh, you should see a nice sharp tube opening when uh, when it hits the null point, which should be where the the bridge matches, and you've run your, on your on your on your capacitor value. All right. Well, this doesn't look like it's working, or at least it's not working like I thought it did. 30 some years ago um, so this might be uh, part one of a two-part video if I decide to try to figure out uh, you know what's what's wrong with this thing uh, I do remember it working um, I haven't uh, looked into the leakage current thing and additionally I just wanted to see if the capacitor bridge seemed to work um, all right, um, it's kind of a disappointing video in a sense. I was hoping it worked, and it appears that it's got some issues. And if there is a second video on this, uh, it might be a while before I get around to this one again. Otherwise, uh, all for now.